my final <laughs> player for the Browns. And, you know, Kenny did the Troy Franklin. We might have to reach a little bit, maybe trade up to get him. This is my pick that's similar to that. And this is a guy that I wasn't necessarily <clears throat> like the highest on at the beginning of this whole process, you know, a month or so ago. But as things have unfolded, the combine, reading more about him, and it's the funny thing is this is a position I don't really even like for the Browns to draft anywhere mm-hmm. high. But I think this kid's an exception, and it's Braden Fisk, defensive Ooh. tackle out of Florida State. He is six foot four, two hundred and ninety-two pounds, a little bit on the lighter side, but he has a high, high motor, good run defender, good pass rusher. So to find a defensive tackle who can be very, very good at both of those things, it's not easy to do. And if the Browns can find an offensive lineman like J.V. and Cohen in the third, maybe they grab Malik Washington later in the fourth or so, Braden Fisk is on the board at the second round or anywhere close to where they're picking in the second round. They can move up a little bit to get him, kind of like they did with J.O.K. I think you go get him. This dude knows how to use his explosive first step to push back blockers, establish the line of scrimmage. He's got great power, great strength in his hands. He uses that for effective rip club moves. Um he, I've been all the scout. He's he's an excellent gap penetrator. He gets upfield and he disrupts the backfield. Again, he uses great hand power, moves to rush the quarterback. He's got above average lateral movement, allows him to redirect and maintain pursuit and pressure against mobile quarterbacks. Very important because we've got Lamar Jackson in the division. Now we've got Russell Wilson and Justin Fields, and Joe Burrow yeah. can move too whenever he needs to. So a guy like Braden Fisk who can quickly redirect, maintain pursuit and track down these mobile quarterbacks, that's going to be key. It really is. Now, some of the things they say he needs to work on his pad height level during some plays, that can allow offensive linemen to gain leverage on him. He's super aggressive when he's penetrating and getting into the backfield, but it also, he needs to harness that a little bit. That negates some situations where he just straight up blows by players in the backfield. But I think it's easier to coach discipline and harnessing a player's aggressiveness than it is to teach a player to be aggressive, wouldn't you say? Yeah, oh, absolutely. So absolutely. with these defensive tackles, you see a lot of guys, like I said, they're either bigger bodies, they're more of a run plugger, you know, a gap stuffer, or you see the more athletic types who are better at rushing the passer, and you kind of use those guys in inter, you know, intermixed roles, but with Fisk, you get a guy who can do both. He's a great athletic interior pass rusher who can also penetrate and plug gaps against the run. He had six sacks in 2023, eight in 2022, 21 tackle for loss in his last two seasons combined. With how the Browns are approaching the defensive tackle position, right now they've got a cemented starter with Dalvin Tomlinson, and he's in just the second year of his four-year contract with the Browns, and then they're rotating these one-year deal contract guys alongside of him, and I think Fisk would be the perfect fit to start off in that rotational, kind of situational role as he's learning and getting up to speed. He can rotate with Mo Hurst, Shelby Harris, Quentin Jefferson. I I hate projecting cap stuff too far ahead, but if you get a guy like Braden Fisk and he proves that he can be an every-down type of player, there is cap relief to be recouped down the road if the Browns would decide to move on from Dalvin Tomlinson later you know, in his age 32 season or whenever, not this year, obviously, maybe not next year, but eventually. And then you're just hoping, as a side note, Siaki Ika can develop into the role that, you know, we're bringing in Jefferson and Harris to play. So if you've watched this show for any length of time, you know I'm very hesitant on drafting defensive tackles. It's a very tough position to evaluate. It's a tough position to transition from college to pro. In college, you know, sometimes you're facing a team that doesn't have any of their offensive linemen who are going to go pro. And sometimes you go up against maybe one or two pro potential offensive linemen. But in the NFL, you are facing all guys who are pro-level talent, and that's where players at the defensive tackle position struggle because you can't just very easily do what you did well in college and just have the same success. So there's definitely a learning curve. But Braden Fisk seems like the kind of player, his demeanor, his mental makeup, his attitude, his aggressiveness, speed, athleticism, strength, those things could all combine to make him a very, very good defender at the NFL level. Yeah, when I hear you talk about him, I hear Jim Schwartz just go, like, I can hear him pumpernickel. He's just like, mm-hmm. yes. Yep. He's, 
The other thing that I kind of hear is ultimately when we were speaking about Perion Winfrey before we drafted him and minus the attitude issues, it was a lot of the same thing and uh, a slighter player that could pass rush that played the defensive uh, tackle position. So I would really like that to recoup that loss that we unfortunately had to cut him and um, uh, have that guy in, in our back pocket for these, um, uh, what do they call them, the Jaguar packages? Uh, where we have like guys that can rush the passer on third down. Like I think that would be an awesome mm-hmm. fit. And then, like you said, let's see if he can progress and get a, a full-time starter. Yeah, definitely. And honestly, this just everything I've read about him, watched and, and listened to scouts and all that stuff, he just feels to me like the type of player who can come in and might start off a little slow, you know, his rookie season as things go, but by the end of the season might be in a... 75% roll, you know, snap count roll on the on the defensive side of the ball because I I think he's I think he's going to be very good. I just I get good vibes from him. There's not a lot of defensive tackles that I research and look into and scout that I come away saying, "Oh yeah, I can see the path for this guy to be a pro bowl level talent." But this guy, I think this guy's got pro bowl level talent built in. I really do. Does, does he like there was a guy Carlton Fisk? Is that is that are they related in some way? Does he have any NFL pedigree? I'm not sure. I'll, I can look that up real quick. Yeah, because like I mean, if everybody wants to know, I pulled up last year's uh, list of who we met at the combine, and the guys that doubled up are here. So we doubled up post and after their pro days. Uh, so Dewan Jones, we drafted him. Dorian Thompson, we drafted him, and then uh, we also did oh uh, Tank Dell. And Tank Dell's a guy that we didn't get, and I like that. I like the mm. pick of uh, Malik Washington. Man, that sounds like something like boy, oh boy, like that. We didn't get him last uh, Tank Dell last year, but we could get a player like that this year. That one I think sticks out to me the most uh, from your three guys. Yeah, and you know Tank Dell obviously has already proven at the NFL level the dude can play. This guy can play. He can he can play with these NFL players. He's already gotten injured. That smaller, that's one of the things that I hear all the time with these smaller bodied receivers, the the yep. under 5'10s, the under 180 pound guys, can they hold up? And while Tank Dell produced, he also got injured. Now we've got sub 5'10 Malik Washington, but he's 190 pounds. And you got to think he comes in, he puts on maybe a little bit more muscle in an NFL training program. Maybe he gets a little closer to that 200 pounds. I'm not so concerned about the 5'8". It's the fact that he can... I've seen... Go watch the highlights, guys, if you haven't. He takes hits. And he, if he if he gets tackled and taken down, like on a hard hit, bounces right back up, number one. Number two, he gets smashed a lot by guys and stays on his freaking feet and keeps going. It is pretty cool to watch him play. You know what? Based on what you're saying, we're going to call half the nickname him Tank. Yeah. <laughs> I think Tank if would be better him. for him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but... And no, Carlton Fisk and Braden Fisk are not related. Their last last names are not spelled the same. So, oh, gotcha. Okay, <laughs> I was wondering. I threw that was kind of like a, a shot in the dark. Braden Fisk has an E at the end of his Fisk. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. It, it stands for elite level potential. In my gotcha. Yes. <laughs> 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 